Okay, this is a 2003 Form B Problem 2 question. And uh, they were very particular about this. And this one is on contingency tables and independence. So a simple random sample of adults living in a suburb of a large city was selected. The age and annual income of each adult in the sample were recorded. The resulting data are summarized in the table below. So what is the probability that a person chosen at random from the sample will be in the 31 to 45 age category? Well, the 31 to 45, there are 89 people, so 89 over 207. And so that's a very, so basically the probability of 31 to 45 equals 89 over 207. And I would turn that into a decimal so that it looks like this. And if you'd done that, that would have gotten you for credit. That's all you had to do. The next one, what's the probability that a person chosen at random from those in the sample whose incomes are over 50,000 will be in the 31 to 45? Well, hold on. So we have to be really careful. It says, what is the probability of a person chosen from those? All right, this is saying from the group or given they came out of this group will be in the 31 to 45 category. So what they're saying is a given that's over 50. Oh, well, essentially that's saying 35 over 96. Now you could have shown it either as 35 over 96 or as the percentage, which is 35 out of 207 divided by 96 over 207. Same thing, 35 over 96. But what they said is, and this is what's really important here, and this is easy to have missed, this is the intersection over 50. So it's that intersection over the 50. So really important that you notice that we had the intersection over the given, because that tells us we're working with the probability of A and B equals the probability um, oh, over the probability of B, and that tells us that's the probability of A given B, all right? And the reason that's important is because it's going to tie into our next part. And it says, based on your answers to part A and B, is annual income independent? So wait a second. Based on this and this, are they independent? Well, remember, if they're independent, if they're independent, then this needs to equal the probability of A. So basically, all I really had to do on this problem is sit there and go, you know what? Probability of A given B equals the intersection. And if independent, it equals the probability of A. Therefore, A given B equals the probability of A. Because all we said was, you know what? I can skip this part and say, this has to equal um, the probability of A, okay? Well, we already have that. So we already have the 0.365, and then we already have the 0 0.43. 0 0.365 from here, does it equal the 0.43? And the answer is no. So all you had to do was that. And if you had done that and say they're not equal, um, they're, they're not independent. Now, I'm going to tell you for a lot of people, that's a little bit difficult. I would have gotten you full credit and you go, I would have rather used the multiplication rule. And technically, I would have rather used the multiplication rule too. If you use the multiplication rule, you would have gotten partial credit. But sometimes a partial is better than no credit. So let's look at how we could have used the multiplication rule. The multiplication rule says this, all right? probability of A times the probability of B equals the probability of A and B. Well, the intersection would have been 35 over 207. And we would have had 96 over 207 times 89 over 207. And when I go Take my calculator, I take the 96 divided by 207 times the 89 divided by 207. I end up getting 
35 divided by 207, 0.1691. One. Those are not equal, therefore they are not independent, all right? And you're like, those are different values, and it's because we, and the answer is yeah, because we approach it from different methods, all right? So, how did we do with this? How did we do it by conditional? Because you're like, hey, I want to get the full credit. Basically, to do it by full credit. We need to know the probability of A given B equals the probability of A and B over the probability of B. But if independent, that equals the probability of A. Well, we said A. was 89 over 207. And we said the intersection, this thing, we got that from part B, and we said that that value was essentially 35 over 96. And since those are not equal, um, they're not independent, okay? All right, I know that's a bit confusing, but please note, you have to be able to do it all three methods. You're gonna to have to be able to check by proportionality. You're gonna to have to be able to check by the multiplication rule, which I think is the easiest. And if you do the multiplication rule as opposed to some other, that may get you full credit, may get you partial, depending what they asked for. But here they said parts A, based on what you did in parts A and B, and you used, um, you used the conditional here, so you had to check it using the conditional. And then the conditional statement is the probability of A given B. The conditional statement is the probability of A given B because the probability of the intersection over B has to equal the probability of A. So let's write these down real quickly. So we can check independence one of three ways. First way, proportionality. Second way, multiplication with a multiplication. It's the probability of A times the probability of B equals the probability of A um, intersect B. The other way is the conditional. And with conditional, we have multiple parts to it. We have the probability of A given B equals the probability of A intersect B over the probability of B, A line B, has to equal the probability of A, which means the probability of A given B equals the probability of A. All right, so on the conditional, you need to know all of this. Multiplication, you need to know this. And proportional, you need to know, uh, just be able to check to see that the percentages are the same. So those are the three methods. Thank you.